Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm here today to talk to you about Avia Planner. And the question is, is this the $3 alternative to Navigraph? There's a couple distinct differences between the two, we'll go over those. And there's a couple interesting things, first off the bat. They have a flight planner, they have a nav data section, and they have a training section. Now Lufthansa has a complete pilot training system. This is not yet included in Avia Planner, and I'm not sure if they plan to include it, but I'm guessing they are because it's listed here. So that's a really interesting thing that we can look forward to in the future. We'll get into the planner, we'll get into the charts. The first thing is this little button over here in the bottom right. You can use this to set whether you want miles or kilometers, meters per second, knots per second, wind speed, hectopascals and inches of mercury and pressure, etc., etc. So you can use this to set the, the weights and the different values that you use in the flight planning section. Now let's go into the planner. So first things first, this is a full-featured flight planner. And if we click here on new flight, give it a call sign, select your flight level, let's depart Denver for Miami. Come here and select our aircraft. It's got a quite a big selection of, of aircraft. Biz jets, Boeing, Airbus. So pretty much everything you're going to fly, they have the option to use for flight planning. They've got the PMDG 737-800, the Zeebo 737-800, which is the one used for X-Plane. So let's use the Boeing 737-800 from PMDG. You can select your fuel reserve and let's click create route. So here we go. So it's given us a complete route from Denver to Miami. The first difference between this and Navigraph is basically the only thing you get in terms of the weights and that sort of thing in terms of planning is the amount of fuel on board. I've done several calculations and compared it to what Navigraph gives you. I've found that Avia Planner gives you lower fuel weights, lower fuel amounts on board the aircraft, but this is a complete and valid IFR route. One thing is you can't change the route. So whatever route that it gives you, that's the route you get. You don't have a certain number of options. Now you can see here there are several options for exporting your flight plan. Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, FSX P3D, X-Plane, PMDG, etc. Now if we select PMDG, one of the tricky things is you have to find manually where to save the flight plan. What I've done because I use Microsoft Flight Simulator and PMDG is I have pinned the two locations for saving flight plans for those two options here in Explorer. So if I want to save the PMDG, I just click here and that's my PMDG, you can see. And if I want to save for Microsoft Flight Simulator, I simply click here. But you have to manually find those two locations. The other thing is, let's say I want to save this for Microsoft Flight Simulator and PMDG. I save it here for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Then I come down here to PMDG. It automatically goes back to whatever the last location is that you saved something. So you can't save a specific location for PMDG and a specific location for MSFS, you have to manually find them each time, which is why you're going to need to save each location if you're going to use different locations to save the flight plan routes. We've saved the PMDG flight plan. I'm going to save it here for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And then we click here on Create Flight. And so here we have our route. And it does a pretty good job of adding the SID and the star for you. The only thing you have to select is the approach. Now, there's a couple of things I really like. The first thing is it's got the weather information, just the basic weather information that you need right here. If you click on the info button, it's going to give you the information about the airport. You can see all the runways at the airport. You can see all the charts, the airport charts, the SIDs, the stars, the approach charts and the weather and i really like the way they do the weather you can actually learn you can actually use this to learn how to read metars and taps so here is the normal faa metar 
which I can read. I'm an instrument rated pilot. But if you can't, it's got it all translated right down here. So if you're interested, you can look here and see what this information is telling you and look up here and figure it out. And this can help you to learn how to read TAFs and METARs. So you see here, 220 at 9 or knots, wind, 220 at 9 or knots, cloud scattered 16,000, scattered 22,000. Down here, cloud scattered 16,000, scattered 22,000. So you've got all the weather information that you need. You can look through the charts manually. And it's got all the charts. We'll, go, we'll get into the charts here in a second. The one thing that I find a little tricky, when you click on Select Approach, it gives you the approaches to the runway, first of all, that you're flying into here at the top, runway 30 in Miami. So we've got the ILS, the RNAV Yankee, and the RNAV Zulu. Let's take a look at the ILS approach. So you've got the transition all, or you've got the transition shan. So the one thing I like about how Navigraph does this is it gives you an overlay. So there's a visual overlay over top of your existing flight plan showing you the approach, what the different transitions are, and it helps you to visualize how to select the correct one. This doesn't do that. I don't know if they're planning on adding the feature. It's very, very helpful when you're planning your approach. If we click here on the chart icon, this is the chart, and I'm not going to give you a complete Lido overview lesson, etc. Just going to go through the basics of it. These are different from the Navigraph charts, which are Jeppesen charts. I personally prefer Jeppesen charts. I find these Lido charts a little bit confusing. They have all the information you need. These are legal IFR charts. They're used by airlines, so clearly they are well laid out. There are some really good aspects to them. Looking at this chart, this is the ILS or localizer 30 for Miami. This gives you the identifier of the approach. This gives you the ILS frequency. Here are the frequencies that you use for the approach. This is your terrain info. This is your plan view. And it's nice that the plan view is very big. You can see very clearly where everything is. Shan is the intermediate fix. There is the approach right here. The missed approach section is in blue. It looks purple to me, but they call it blue. The dotted line. So that's the missed approach procedure. Aerodrome elevation down here. Transition level, transition altitude down here. So it gives you all the information that you need. Here it gives you a quick overview of the runway, runway 30. This shows you what the approach light system is. This is the displaced threshold and the landing distance available. These are in meters, and you can't change that, obviously. So this is in meters. Touchdown zone elevation. This is the end lighting at the other end of the runway to tell you when you're getting close to going off the end of the runway. Distance and altitude information, 10.6 miles, 3,000 feet. 2490, 1850, etc. as you come in. This is a side view of the approach, obviously. The D is the descent point. So on the standard glide slope, you're going to be intercepting at 10.6 miles from the ILS transmitter. And you can see here coming down to the missed approach point. That's the missed approach point for the localizer approach. Obviously, the missed approach for the ILS is an altitude and not a place. And this gives you, again, the missed approach information. This is your ground speed information, what descent rate you're going to need for what ground speed you're flying. And here's a really big difference, and this is something important to know and to understand with Lido charts. There are five approach categories, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo. Alpha is for aircraft with a final approach speed between 0 and 90 knots. Bravo is 91 to 120. Charlie is 121 to 140, Delta is 141 to 165, and Echo is 165 and above. You can see here, they only provide the information for approach categories Charlie and Delta. That's from 121 knots to 165 knots. And this covers all of your transport category jets and your biz jets. So Charlie and Delta... Like I said, all your Airbus, your all your Boeings, all your biz jets are going to be in categories Charlie and Delta. Missing is, obviously, Alpha and Bravo. That is all your general aviation aircraft. And most of your light twins, even things like the TBM 930. And that information is not included on these charts. And as a matter of fact, 
all of the information on an approach chart that is related to general aviation aircraft is not present on the Lido chart. So that's what you need to understand is that these are charts that are designed for airliners, airliners and business jets. So if you are somebody who flies, let's say the 414, the Cessna 414, the Beach Duke, things like that, even the TBM, these charts are not going to be any good for you. So you need to understand that. Let's take a quick look at what the difference is between this chart and the Jeppesen chart that Navigraph uses. All right, so here's the JEP chart. The biggest differences are the JEP, the JEP chart has what they call the briefing strip, which has all the frequency information, all the information for the approach, the frequency you need for the ILS, the final approach course, glide slope intercept, decision height, airport elevation, missed approach information, any notes you need to know about. It has all this information up at the top. The Lido chart has it mixed in with the plan view. Here you've got the plan view itself, which in the JEP chart is very clean. In the Lido chart, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just different. It is bigger in terms of how much of the chart it takes up. So it's, it's very clear. It's very easy to see. They both have the side view and they both have approach category information. The difference being, of course, that the JEP chart has Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. And you can see here, the Lido chart has just Charlie and Delta. In this particular case, it wouldn't make any difference on the ILS because the approach minimums for Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta are all the same, which generally speaking is, is true for ILS approaches. However, for RNAV approaches, it's often different. For localizer or VOR approaches, it will definitely be different. You can see in this particular case, you only get Charlie and Delta for the localizer approach, whereas on the JEP chart, you get Alpha and Bravo as well. So there are some differences in the charts. So how are we going to use AviaPlanner? My suggestion would be if you have a SimBrief account, which anybody I'm sure who's flying an Airbus, a Boeing, you have a SimBrief account and you use it for flight planning now. Use SimBrief for the flight planning, which is free, easily downloaded, loaded into your aircraft in the Sim. Virtually all the planes in the Sim have SimBrief integration. And then use Avia Planner for your charts. So for this particular flight, if we go to the dispatch system, a new flight, Denver to Miami, pick the PMDG 737, there's our flight plan, generate the flight, import the flight into Microsoft Flight Simulator, load the flight into Microsoft Flight Simulator, and then you're ready to go. Here we are in Denver in the 737. Come here into the cockpit, electronic flight bag, request data from SimBrief, and it's that simple. Now we have our flight plan. Come down into the FMC. Set our payload, set our fuel. And there is our route. Load that, activate it, execute, and we're good to go. Now we've got our route loaded. We have all the information from our SimBrief flight plan. Now we come back here to Avia Planner, open the charts. Here's our Denver Airport chart. You do not have the option of geo reference charts, so your aircraft is not going to show up on the chart. They also don't have an app. It is not integrated into the SIM, so there's no app to open within the SIM to see the charts in the SIM. And this is actually just their web page. I've just made it full screen. But you've got your charts, you've got your ground charts here. You're flying this SID, you've got the chart for the SID, you've got your star here into Miami. Of course, you set your approach, ILS 3.0, Shan transition, and you can see. So once you load the approach, it gives you the overview, obviously, of the flight plan. But it would be nice to be able to have a way to visualize this approach and how it fits together with the star before you actually select it. And you've got your approach chart, so you're all set to go. You've got all your charts. So again, my recommendation would be to use SimBrief to plan your flight, load the plan 
into your aircraft using the SimBrief integration like you normally would, and then use the Avia Planner Lido charts. Navigraph charts are $8 a month. Lido charts through Avia Planner are $3 a month. So that's, you know, less than half. And they also have a plan where you can get a year for $29. Math makes my head hurt, but that's $2.42 a month. So you've got $2.42 a month for all, all of these charts. So what charts do you get or what airports do you get? They say 2,000 airports worldwide. And so you're going to have all of the major international airports. You're going to have all of the regional airports, the regional jet ports that you fly into with your VA flying or whatever kind of airline flying or biz jet flying that you do. Are they going to have every airport in the world? Clearly not. There's 26,000 airports in the world. They have 2,000. But you're going to have all of the airports that you're using if you're doing airline flights and biz jet flights for the most part. The other great thing is they have a three-day free trial, so you can try this out for three days and see if it works for you, see if it's got the airports that you like to fly into. So overall, Avia Planner is great. It's, it's very inexpensive, gives you the charts that you need. There is going to be a learning curve for people who aren't familiar with Lido charts, which is pretty much everybody. In my- the other side is they will be adding features, I'm sure, as they go on. They just launched this a couple days ago. If you do your flight planning through SimBrief and are just looking for an inexpensive source of charts, this is fantastic. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I hope everybody's having a good day.